Hi, welcome back to my garden. In this week's newsletter from Mindcreaser, I came across a very interesting uh, piece reflecting on, well, discipline in general, motivation, stuff like that. Who is Mindcreaser, you ask? Well, Mindcreaser is, um, I suppose it's the title of the newsletter or perhaps an, um, an alter ego of Benjamin Porto. Perhaps mangling the name, it's a sort of French spelling, but who knows how he pronounces it. Um, and who is Benjamin? Well, he's a performance psychologist, and I came across his work uh, after he was interviewed in or mentioned in some sometime back in a series of chess podcasts after he'd worked with the British um, Olympics chess teams, Olympiad, the way chess calls them, British Olympiad chess teams, and. Um, and he works, I guess, with other uh, professional athletes and the like. But his newsletter really is uh, applicable to performance in, in much more general ways. Uh, it could be something competitive. It could just be how, about, how you go about your, you know, your daily life. Um, he discusses nutrition and sleep, uh, um, your mental attitude. All that sort of good stuff. And in this week's newsletter, he was talking about a system of discipline which he called ICED. Uh, and I guess he's, he's borrowed it, adapted it, stolen it wholes wholesale from a book still running, uh, which looks like it's very interesting, but I haven't been able to track it down. Uh, a book written by... A lady, Vanessa Zuzay, that sort of picture, Japanese spelling, Goddard. So I think it, the, the Zuzay is, is a sort of um, monastic name that she has been given or adopted because she spent a long period of time before writing full-time uh, as an um, uh, initiate in a Zazen monastery in upstate New York. And Still Running is all about um, meditation through running. It's sort of a nice little pun. Uh, and it, it's how to be more deeply engaged with your running and, and gain practice. Sort of this, this uh, branch of Buddhism's meditation through your running. Actually, I looked quite interesting, so although I couldn't find the book, um, I did find a, a, a fantastic interview with uh, her on another podcast. An interesting podcast, actually, which um, really was very well done. It has more than 40 episodes, and astonishingly only seven subscribers, almost no views. Very hard to understand the the algorithmic and general taste on the internet, how it all works. Why this is not better known is a little bit of a mystery to me. But uh, I was glad I took the hour to listen to this conversation and get her very calming insights. Anyway, back to Benjamin's ice system of discipline and motivation. What does IST stand for? Because as you can imagine, uh, it is an acronym. Well, it's uh, intent, commitment, effort, and discipline. Um, but each of these four words uh, in the newsletter, he kind of picks them apart a little bit because they can mean subtly different things, and it's, it's the whole package that's important. And I'm going to particularly focus today on... Uh, the first and the last. Well, I'll probably mention all of them. But the first is the critical one to me, because when he talks about the intention, he sort of unpicks this, and it's a question of looking at why you are doing what you are doing, why you want to do this thing. So if I used, because this came to me through 
a sort of chess newsletter, if I use chess as my uh, personal sort of example, why do I want to play chess? And when I started thinking about that, looking for the deep underlying reason, um, it wasn't so easy to answer. And in fact, later in the email, uh, Benjamin gives this little exercise where he asks you to do just that. Think of the thing that you're trying to do and ask the question on the deepest possible level, why do I want to do this thing? And in particular, I think what he's, maybe I'm reading between the lines or inferring things for my own nefarious purposes, but I, I don't think so. What he's asking you to look beyond are the more ego-driven reasons. So one of the reasons I always enjoyed playing chess is because it, you know, I like beating people. It made me feel good. Or when I play chess online and my rating goes up, it does make me feel good. You know, I am better than most people that play chess online, better than more than 99.9% .9 of them, uh, which I suppose says something for the overall standard of, of many people who play chess online, but all the same. You know, I take some pride in that. But perhaps therein lies the problem, because if I focus on that, that is, is very much an ego thing. And what Benjamin is suggesting, and I think certainly uh, Vanessa is talking about, is that no good will come of this. Eventually, you're going to run into problems, into uh, conflict. Um, because you're not really looking at a, 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 an intrinsic reason. You are allowing to be, yourself to be motivated simply by what goes on outside of you. And that motivation, therefore, hangs on things uh, beyond your control, very much beyond your control. Well, of course, if you are familiar with even a little bit of uh, Buddhist thinking, Everything is beyond our control in, on some level. But um, I guess what they, and I'm really a complete uh, um, beginner, initiates not in the monk sense, but initiate in the sense of, of the depth of my knowledge. But the stuff that is within you, the, the intrinsic motivations, uh, Whilst, again, you know, everything is beyond your control on, on, in some sense outside of you, uh, you do, as Viktor Frank, Frankl put it, you do have some control how you react to things. You can train yourself. Um, and in particular, what Benjamin's suggesting, for example, I do when I look at my chess plan, is look at a deeper, I suppose, non-competitive reason as to why I play chess. A sort of, in my case, the, the conclusion I reached is that there was always a, a pursuit of beauty in it, of self-expression, of creativity. Um, I suppose a, a way of, if I was talking to other chess players and, I was, and they were asking, but how can I kind of unearth this? I think a good way of doing this in, in terms of chess is ask yourself, well, the games which left you with the warmest, fuzziest feeling, not the kind of satisfaction because it was the greatest accomplishment and other people praised you for, but the games that you, on a deep level, were proudest of, uh, and not necessarily the wins, but games where you thought, wow, what a fantastic game. Look at the nature of that game, and it might tell you a little bit, shed some light about what really appeals to you in chess, and consequently your intention, what you want to get out of chess. And if it becomes something, for example, in chess terms, not your rating or your trophies, but something uh, that is a more noble pursuit, well, that is what is going to really drive you. 
intent. Uh, what about effort? I, I've no, I've uh, skipped out C. Well, perhaps let's let's just deal with C. C is uh, the strength, the commitment, the strength, uh, the length that you are willing to go, and how serious you are about that intent. But let's put that to one side. What about effort? Now, effort is not about gritting your teeth. In the email, Benjamin uses his example, a, a sort of a Zen story, not necessarily a koan, but just a piece of Zen law, uh, where a monk is talking to a, a novice, and they're talking about playing a harp. Um, and, and the novice is talking about his difficulties. Uh, and he says, well, when the strings are too tightly strung, can you play your harp? And well, no, the strings break too easily. When it's too loosely strung, well, they don't really make a sound. And he said, exactly. And that is what, where your effort needs to be. Your effort mustn't be so grit your teeth and forceful that it is a struggle and a fight, because that is that will snap. And equally, it mustn't be so relaxed and laissez-faire, because nothing will come of it. It needs to be, I suppose, smooth. It needs to be comfortable. Um, gentle and yet at the same time serious finally we get on to this topic of discipline and um, and he draws a parallel in his email a parallel uh, an, an opposite position a, a counter example looking at david goggins the um famous American Navy SEAL who's written a book about endurance running and is very much a, you know, when you think you've reached your physical limits, you are only at 40%. You crack on, you push on, you push through it. You know, and Goggins is famous for completing ultramarathons with broken legs and all sorts of extraordinary feats of endurance. But Benjamin makes the astonishing assertion that that sort of discipline is driven by self-hatred and and it's a tough point um i was thinking about another person who who goes for that total commitment that i've often mentioned and i love uh charles bukowski and i thought you know perhaps there's something to uh what benjamin's suggesting that that kind of total commitment is, is self-hatred, not love. It's um, denial of yourself. And in the case of David Goggins, it was a rejection of who he was. I mean, it really was self-hatred. He, and he says this in his book, that he looked at himself, this overweight, um, uh, at the point he was a pest controller. So, you know, an overweight killer of cockroaches. What he really wanted to be was a marine. And he, and, and he there and then resolved and, and, and just went for it. And, and But he was driven, as he was throughout the training, that the drive is this brutal thing. And for most of us in what we're doing, uh, this is, is not going to end well. Um, we need something that is... Uh, in harmony with our lives. Well, I've sort of rambled on a little bit. Uh, perhaps this is something that needs further unpicking. Perhaps not. I will, as always, reflect on it and uh, uh, feel free if there's something that does require um, elaboration or, or correction. Let me know in the comments. But um, 
Yes, I think I'm going to stop here. So, as always, I trust your lives are filled with joy. And until next week, from sunny Brazil, ciao.